Welcome. In this short video, we're going to talk about dragging and dropping people from one Roots Magic database into another file. Now, this can be useful for several reasons. Uh, one, it can be useful if you want to bring a part of a database into a new database. It can also be useful when comparing two files and you want to bring just a piece of one of those files into the other file. So let's just jump right in and kind of show you some examples. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to have my own database up on the screen, but I'm going to go up here and create a new Roots Magic file. So I'm going to come up and I'm just going to give it a name. I'm just going to call this one Test. And when I create this new database, it's going to open this database side by side with mine. Now, I'm going to collapse these little side lists. I'm going to click that little button just so we have a little bit more room to view what I'm actually doing here. Okay, this first thing, what I'm going to do is I am going to take this Howard Smith and a few generations of his ancestors to bring them over into this new database. So all I have to do is click with my mouse button on Howard and while I'm holding it down, drag it to this other database. And when I do that, Roots Magic's going to ask me, who do you want to copy to the other database? And in this case, I'm going to say, I want his ancestors and their children. Now we'll come back to this screen to kind of talk about what each of these options are. But for this time, we're going to do ancestors and their children, and I'm just going to do three generations. Now you can do as many generations as you want. You can pick a number that's larger than the number of generations you actually have in order to get all of those generations. But in this case, I mainly want Howard Jr., Howard Sr., and, and his wife, and then the grandparents, and then the children in each of those families. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Roots Magic is going to copy them over. Now, one thing you'll notice is even though I brought Howard Smith Jr. over, he's not that starting person in this new database. That's because Roots Magic uses the person with the lowest record number as that starting person when you add them to a new database. So if I want Howard to be this starting person over here, I need to select this database, make sure it's the selected one by clicking on it and then come up here to Tools, and then down to File Options, and I want to set Howard Smith Jr. as the root person. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. I'm going to pick Howard's, Howard Smith Jr. right there. That's the person I want to be the root person, and select him. It's now showing he's the new root person, and click OK. Now, even though I set him as the root person, it doesn't automatically switch to him at this time. It, he will be the one that comes up automatically anytime I open this file in the, in the future. But if I want to set him right now, what I can do is say search and go to the root person. Or I can press control home. And so there we now have Howard Smith Jr., his parents, and his grandparents. And we have the children in each of those families as well. Now. All the information is there, so if I double click on Howard here, I will see um, that information there next to, or Howard Smith, that's senior. I can come over here to Howard Smith Senior over here, and it's the exact same information. When I drag and drop people, or groups of people, everything about those people transfers over. Their names, their events, dates, places, their notes, their sources, their media items. You'll notice the little picture comes up for them as well. Everything comes over um, when you uh, bring, bring the people over using drag and drop. Now, as I mentioned, another useful purpose for drag and drop is when you have two files and you want to bring part of one of those files over into an existing file. So for example, let's say that this particular file is one that I've been working on and this is one that I created a new Roots Magic file and imported a GEDCOM or something. In other words, this is data that somebody maybe has sent me. And I notice that I have James Smith and that this file over here has James Smith, but it also has additional ancestors out there that I would like uh, for mine as well. So what I can do is I can click on James Smith in this one and drag, and instead of just dropping him anywhere, I drop him on James Smith over here. 
When I do that, again, exact same screen, what do I want to do? And I'm just going to say ancestors. I'm going, to, I'm going to leave the children out this time, and you'll see why in a little bit. I'm not going to put the children in. I, I just want James Smith and his parents and grandparents and great-grandparents and so on. Now, there's a new thing you're going to see here, and th that's this option. And it's asking, are James Smith, 125, I don't have the record numbers turned on, but it's saying, is this James Smith and this James Smith the same person? And if they are, I want to check that, because if I check that, Roots Magic's going to merge those two records for me. So what it's going to be doing is copying James Smith and all of his ancestors into this database, but then instead of just leaving them floating as a tree, it's going to merge this James Smith with this James Smith to connect the new tree up. I'm going to go ahead and click OK, and there we go. It copied 51 people, so there's quite a few ancestors out there, and it merged them in. So now I have this particular line. Now this is very useful when you have two databases that may be similar, uh, and but you want to kind of combine them without just combining the entire databases and then having to do merging the rest of your life. It lets you pick and choose individual lines to bring over into your own database. Now I'm going to come up here to James, this James Smith, the senior James Smith, and the reason I'm going to do this is I'm going to switch to the family view for each of these. And this is why I didn't bring all the children over, because I wanted to show that drag and drop works from any of these views. It, you're not limited to doing that just from that pedigree view. So if I'm looking at two families, James and Betsy Mead, and I see that, oh, I've got children over here that I don't have in my database, I can just click on Henrietta Smith and drag her over and drop her. And who do I want to copy? I can say just Henrietta Smith, or I could pick if she happened to have um, other uh, other spouses and whatever, I can select those people as well. But then it's going to say, is Henrietta Smith the child of James and Betsy? And I'm going to say, yep. And by doing that, it's saying, if you check this, Roots Magic is going to automatically add her as a child in this family. So I'm going to say, okay. It brings her over as a child in this family. And I can do the same thing with others as well. I can click over there and I can say, just him. Yes, he's a child. And so instead of having to go in and retype that person, I can just drag and drop them over. Now you'll notice that it's just adding them to the end of the children list. So once I've brought all of the children over, I will want to rearrange them in the proper order. And I can do that by clicking that little up and down arrow. And then that'll let me rearrange them. And I can drag and drop them in the proper order, or I can just say sort by birth date. It will sort them by the birth date, click OK, and now they're rearranged. And so now I have Henrietta, William, and James, Henrietta, William, and then James down here. And I can do that with each of the rest of the children. Okay, so I am going to actually delete this, this database right here because we're going to start with a new one. So I'm going to delete this file right here, get back to our original place. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a new another new database and we'll just call this one test again since we just deleted that but that way we're starting with a new blank database and we're going to kind of go over a couple of options i'm just going to click anybody it doesn't really matter who i click and drag and drop to get this um, let's go over some of the options that you have when doing drag and drop you can copy just the one person that's what we were doing when we were dragging children over one at a time we can, uh, we can do the ancestors of that person, or we can do the ancestors and their children. We can also do the descendants of that person, so we could pick somebody farther out and bring them and their children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren, and then we can choose whether or not we want to include spouses. Everyone in the same tree. That basically is going to take everybody that's connected to Howard Smith Jr. Now, often that's your entire database. Um, but you may have little trees floating around in your database and you want to create a new file that doesn't have all of those small little trees floating around. That's where this can be useful. Everyone in the same tree. Everyone in the database, okay? In other words, this is just basically going to make a copy of your file. It's going to select everybody that's in that database and bring them over into the new database. Um, that actually can be useful 
Um, if you ever get corruption in your file, now the first thing to try is if you, if you ever get corruption in your database is under the file menu there's an option called database tools and we have another short video that talks about those tools so that's always the first thing to try. If that doesn't work kind of a last resort type of option is to create a new blank database and drag and drop your entire database into that new one. Uh, the, the process of drag and drop uh, dropping people does some cleanup so it, you can often uh, remove corruption from a database by using drag and drop and selecting everyone in the file. The last option, let me select people from a list, and this is like the power option. This is where you can select any group of people that you want from this file to bring them into the database. They don't even have to be connected together. We'll just do a short little uh, example. I'm going to go ahead and click OK, and I could just go select random people. I could just go down here and say, these are the people, those people I want in the new database. But I'm going to use the tools up here to mark a group of people. And I can mark just a family. I, again, I've got some of the same options I had before, ancestors and descendants. You have genetic lines if you want to bring just a genetic line into the new file. Um, but this is the one we're going to do. Select people by data fields. And this is going to bring up the criteria screen where you can select basically any kind of group of people. So I'm just going to go quickly and I'm going to say I want to copy everybody whose birth place contains Iowa. And then I could say and or you know their birth date or death date is after this or their name is surname is Smith or whatever. I can get as fancy as I want with this criteria. I'm going to select OK. It is marked 47 people that were born in Iowa and I'm going to say OK. And that's all I had to do. And now I have a database over here with just people that were born in Iowa. And I may have multiple, if I go up to the tools and say um, count the trees, you'll see I have a bunch of trees. I have one tree that has 22 people in it that were all born in Iowa and then I have many smaller ones. And this is what I was talking about when I said you might have a bunch of little trees you want to get rid of. That's where that other option about only the people in that one tree is all you're going to copy. And that is a brief demonstration of how to use drag and drop to copy a person or multiple people from one Roots Magic file into another one.